Morning folks, Indy Truck Davey in the truck. Coming to you this morning from Newton Stewart. I'm going to lay by just in for the roundabout at Newton Stewart on the A75 where it's how can it do? <laughs> and it's a 12 degrees. We were chilly this morning. I've went live this morning because of time constraints and because I'm in the borders and uploading would be very, very difficult. So we'll start the show today as we always do with a coronavirus update. Okay? These are the figures for the 20th of the 5th, 20. Okay? Tested in Scotland. These are only hospital tests, remember. Tested in Scotland, and they're also accumulative figures since the uh, epidemic broke out here in Scotland. So, here we go. Tested in Scotland, in the hospitals, 92,594, and that's an increase of 2,173. Tested positive, as I say, it's an accumulative figure. Morning, a as fourteen thousand seven hundred and fifty-one. Active cases as a one thousand five hundred and sixty-one, and that's a decrease from the nineteenth to the twentieth of a hundred and forty-three cases. Deaths never a good number. Never a good number. Two thousand. 184, these are the hospital deaths, I'm about to give you the com combination of hospital deaths and deaths in the community since this epidemic broke out in Scotland, okay? The National Register of Scotland reported that up until Sunday past there, 3,546 coronavirus related deaths were registered in Scotland. Let me repeat that number because it's bloody sore. Um, and it's a, it's a hard one. That's 3,546 people have lost their lives to this virus here in Scotland so far. Okay. Not a good number and my condolences go to absolutely every person who has lost a friend or a loved one to this. Okay. Now... Let's move on because it's a bit a hard one to chew on that number. Now, before I launch into the stuff that I'll be written doing, something, so I remembered something. So, yesterday, um, Health Minister Jean Freeman gave a statement to the Parliament. And during that statement, Miles Briggs of the Conservative and Unionist Party basically accused Jean Freeman of seeding care homes with coronavirus a, 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 um, coronavirus positive a, pensioners and that was a bloody outrage remember at the start of this we were on lockstep with his Westminster government taking the lead that's the Westminster government folks that has killed 130,000 Plus, that was at the last count, 130,000 of UK citizens with their benefit reforms and universal credit and sanctions. Right? This is the UK government that has caused 60,000 plus coronavirus deaths because they didn't realise we live in an island. They didn't pull up the drawbridges. They didn't close the Euro Tunnel, and they didn't ground flights. We could have sat this out the same way Australia did, the same way New Zealand did. So, Mr. Miles Briggs, your party is directly responsible for the deaths of 190,000 UK citizens. And at next year's election, we're coming for you, Mr. Briggs. We're going to take out the trash and you other trash, I will be giving town hall speaks and your region, speeches in your region, to ensure that people are aware of the amount of people your party have killed. 190,000 citizens so far, your party's killed. And I will be coming to your region, and I will be giving town hall speeches in your region, to ensure 
that the people in your region know that you've got blood in your hands and we're going to take out the trash and you, Miles Briggs, you are the bloody trash. <coughs> That's the rant over. Time to move on. Coronav coronavirus bill number two passes the Scottish Parliament yesterday. And the most important part of that bill, as far as I'm concerned, is the bit where it says that companies who are registered in tax havens will not receive grants or any aid or assistance from the Scottish Government. Well done, Scottish Government and the Greens. Today, the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, will set out a phased programme for lifting the lockdown. Don't expect too much, people. Because unlike Miles Briggs's party, the First Minister values the lives of the citizens here in Scotland. And I don't expect her to go very far or very fast. Which is the correct thing to do. But there'll be some loosening off of the lockdown. Golf clubs will reopen apparently, you'll be able to go fishing, you'll be able to meet friends in the park as long as you socially distance. Some businesses will probably avoid to reopen, like construction and garden centres. I'm not 100% sure about construction, but I know that the, um, the Institute of Master Builders here in Scotland have been working very hard to put safe working practices in place, so hopefully the construction industry will get up and running again. And he, as I say, the Institute for Directors and the Institute of Master Builders have been excellent here in Scotland throughout this. Well done to them. And uh, any changes that do come into effect will not come into effect until after the 28th of May. Right? Now... First Minister's questions came at the back of your statement yesterday. Car crash. Jackson Carlo. Another man with blood in his hands. Dodgy second-hand car salesman. Failed businessman. An alleged art thief was banging on about the Nike conference in Edinburgh. And trying to say that the First Minister hushed this up. Well, the First Minister didn't hush this up. This is a health concern. And where there's health concerns, then there's patient confidentiality come into, into play here. Now, the, uh, the, the test, track and trace team took the decision that it shouldn't be made public. Not the First Minister. But, on hindsight, they, they said they'll look at it again. Me personally, if it's a small outbreak and it can be contained right away, there's no need to frighten the public or scare the public in the, in the place where the small outbreak's been found and contained. Um, Richard Leonard, who I hear you ask, that's right, nobody knows who he is. I've said this earlier and earlier again. Anyway, he went with um, the report that came out of the Commonweal. Um... The one that was written by Nick Kemp, not even a medical practitioner, by the way. Just somebody that was a director of a Care for the Aged in Glasgow. Anyway, he went with that. And he... Well, what can you say? Um, but he, one of the viewers, Thomas MacArthur, he contacted me in the comments yesterday to say that Robert, uh, Robin McAlpine's a nice guy. I wasn't having a go at Robin McAlpine or the Commonweal. I was just pointing out that it's a it's a an extreme left wing think tank. That's it. You know. Um. So, if anybody thought I was having a go at Robin yesterday, then I wasn't. I've met Robin a couple of times myself. Um. He seems like a nice enough fella. But here in Scotland, we have centralist politics. We have left a centre, we have right a centre. Robin's think tank is way to the left. 
it's nowhere near left the centre. Okay. Now anyway, as I said yesterday, you you could have, if you wanted to, you could have went on to the, the Commonweal website and read um, Nick Kemp's um, report yourselves. Good luck with that. I skimmed it and geez, oh, it was crap. Hey. Unionists are raging. Uh, hey. <laughs> Ursula von der Leyen. Because um, when Istvan Ushi asked in the European Parliament if Scotland could uh, rejoin the EU or be fast tracked back into the EU, <coughs> and he used the words broke free of the prison of <laughs> Great Britain. Um, and his question, then Ursula von der Leyen said, aye. <coughs> Unionists here in Scotland, <laughs> these are the Unionists that don't mind um, Northern Ireland being annexed by the EU, but Unionists in Scotland went absolutely mental. Absolutely mental. A. Hey. And they told the EU to mind their own business. <laughs> <coughs> you remember, folks, this is the this is, these are these unionists that really don't care about their so-called unionist brothers and sisters in Northern Ireland being annexed by the EU, but the object to an independent Scotland being told it would or a, a <laughs> Scotland being told if it became independent, it could join the EU. You couldn't make this comedy up. You really couldn't he? See if we could see if we could get us out in the screen for sensible people around the world to see. They would be falling over laughing. Absolutely falling over laughing. Scientists in England hit back. Alright. I don't know if you've seen the UK briefing last night. <laughs> they try to do it some other ins ins <laughs> Inconsequential a minister. I think he was probably um what was he? Fuck I can't even knew anyway. <laughs> when a question was asked, the scientific advisor says, Well we supply the government with the science, they make the decisions <laughs> Because the government had been blaming the scientists for what's going on, saying they were following the signs. Well, the scientists hit back yesterday and said, nah, we just provide information, they make the decisions. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So the blame goes straight back to Westminster's door for the catastrophe that's happening here in the UK. A catastrophe I keep telling people didn't need to happen. I inform people when I meet them, when I'm out in the road, that this catastrophe didn't need to. <laughs> Minister for Clutchers. That this catastrophe didn't need to happen. All right. I don't need to get into it again. I've already pointed out we live in a bloody rock in the middle of the sea. Do the rest yourself. <laughs> <coughs> so the scientists are hitting back. They're no, they're no taking the blame for us. They're making it clear. We're providing information to the UK government. The UK government are making political decisions. So stick that in the pipe and smoke you. Smoke it. That's the way to do it, scientists. All right. Guardian's reporting that the, the price for drugs in the NHS will skyrocket if Boris Johnson signs a deal with Americans. But we were already aware of that. But the Guardian did a report on it yesterday. You can pop onto their website and read it yourself. It was an interesting article. Um, the Financial Times reports that uh, the basket of 10 G10 uh, G, G20 currencies, the basket of 10 G20 currencies, which most currency investors and the central banks use as reserves. Um, the UK pound was the worst performing of the 10 currencies. The, the FT, FT reports that since, um, since March, the value of the pound has dropped 4%. And, uh, and it's likely to drop further, apparently, because of uh, fresh fears of no-deal Brexit on the table. Right? 
So basically currency investors are fleeing for the pound and they're heading off into other currencies. Central banks are ditching the pound because of the up and coming catastrophe that's going to be a no deal Brexit. Remember folks, I reported yesterday or the day before that the UK government has now issued um, tariffs for trading with the EU. Right? That indicates clearly that they're not going for a free trade deal with the EU. It will be... Um, thanks, Steve. It was nice to laugh again. Um, it will be a, a no deal. If you're going to have a free trade agreement, you don't bloody well need tariffs. So there wouldn't be any need for a schedule of tra tariffs. All right. What else we got? Aye, on the subject of the pound's value and the, of course, no deal Brexit, which is coming up probably at the end of June, when the unionists ask us what currency we're going to use, tell them we're going to use the bloody tatty scone, it's worth more than their pound. <laughs> <coughs> nice cup of coffee. E. The civil war in England intensifies as 30 councils tell the government we're not going to open our schools. So, <coughs> the, the councils in England are having a look at this UK government and going, nah, clowns, we're not playing your game. Where's the safe working practices? Where's the safe working procedures to put in place? How do we socially isolate children? How do we make space and already run down knackered schools because you haven't invested in education for years? So, the EIS and the, all the other teacher unions, and of course, individual schools, because you've got to remember, schools down there can opt out and run themselves. So individual schools are saying, no, we're not opening up either. Um, Oxford and Cambridge are putting all their lectures online for next year. And they expect state schools to open up. See, when these toughs and their children are back in school, then come and talk to us. Um, Gove confirms there will be a border in the Irish Sea yesterday. He makes it clear to unionists in Northern Ireland, we're throwing you under a bus. There will be a border down the North Sea. They have way further expanded on where the, where the checkpoints are going to be and what sort of checks they're going to be. Um, as I said, but what's interesting about that is I don't hear unionists in Scotland screaming to support their brothers and sisters in Northern, Northern Ireland. I don't see them out protesting in Westminster with their big drums and their paramilitary uniforms and their bowler hats and their silly sashes. <coughs> I don't see busloads of people coming out from Northern Ireland or going down from Scotland to protest what's happening to Northern Ireland for the Unionist fraternity here in Scotland or even for the Unionist fraternity in Ireland. Unbelievable. Right, a wee bit of good news before I wind this up and go on to just having a chat with you for a wee bit, right? Good news is that Fife has been chosen to be the world's first 100% green energy um, hydrogen network. All right. SGN, um, who are basically a gas pipe supply, a, a gas supply company, have chosen Fife to be the place, the first place in the world to go into a producing hydrogen and to network hydrogen throughout the network so that we can have hydrogen trucks. Electric cars might work, but it's not going to work for trucks. The amount of batteries it would take just to power this machine arm in would mean there wouldn't be any, we wouldn't be able to put anything in the back of it. We would, we would surpass the weight limit just by the batteries it's alone. So hydrogen trucks are definitely the way forward. And Fife being chosen to be the place to pioneer this um, technology is absolutely wonderful. 
And that's a bloody good news story. Now, that's the indie truck Davy part of the show finished this morning, folks. That's the subjects and, and the things that I picked for yesterday's news to discuss with you this morning. Now, it's just Davy McGuinness talk to pals live on Facebook. So, hi, Stephen. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Brian. Hi, Jazz. Nice to see you all there. Um, and the other 101 of you that are watching. Thanks for watching, folks. Right. Now, I've been noticing on social media that some of my friends are not coping very well with this lockdown. They're starting to feel the pressure of it. I mean, some of them are realising it themselves. Like Dean. Dean's realised that he's, his mental health suffering for this. So Dean's been open and, and reaching out and he's realised himself he's struggling. He's talking to his doctor and things like that. So well done, Dean. On the other hand, Drew, well, Drew's just getting angry and he's thrashing out, he's whacking out at everybody. Folks, we can all make a wee difference here. You know, I got up this morning and uh, I was sitting having my, having my cup of coffee, checking out the early news and things like that. And up popped a wee box in the corner for Margaret Sheridan, saying I was tagged in a post. So I went and had a look at that post. And it brought a smile to my face. Like last week when we said that Jane Black just called us out of the blue. She was sitting on the beach. Doing it at Helensburg. You know. We can all do these things. To make this a wee bit easier on each other. You know. If you don't know somebody's phone number. But you're uh, in contact with them in Messenger. Then. There's a wee button in Messenger. That lets you either go. FaceTime. Or telephone. Use that. You know, if you think somebody's struggling out there, if you can reach out, say hello, a wee message, are you feeling all right? You know, that's going to be important. Hi, Fristin Ra. Hi, Diane. Hey. <laughs> um, so, as I say, social media, because it's the um, detractors, but social media always uh, also has advantages. It puts us back in contact with old friends like Eileen. Hi, Eileen. And uh, through social media, Sarah and I, a.k.a. the Dragon, have met thousands of years. Thousands. And uh, we've spent time with, with... We've actually grown a network of friends. You see, I've just mentioned Sarah, Dean... Um, Margaret, you know, we Sarah Jane Black, we have a, we've made a network of friends through social media. So social media is a good way to reach out. If you're seeing in the posts that a, that you see that your friends are struggling a wee bit, just reach out a wee bit. It doesn't take much. Hi, John. Hi, I'm doing fine, mate. When should Independence be back on the on 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 the go, Andrew? It should never be half. That's why I'm doing this programme every day. It's not just to tell you about things that you might have missed in the news. It's to make it quite clear that we've still got a network out there. And keep that network up and running. You know. So. But it's not all just about independence. It's about a, what's going on in the greater society as well. And that's why I'm saying let's use social media for everybody's advantage. Let's use it for the good that it was invented for. Ah, you still, you coping well, are you, Jane? That's good. No, it's definitely no half behind the scene. It's never been half behind, it's never been half uh, the agenda for me, Brenda. I mean, I still preach it everywhere I go. I mean, I'm not really locked in the house, as you know. So, I'm still getting to meet frontline workers and discuss the issues with them. That's, that's nice, Jazz. That's exactly what I mean. You know, if anybody needs a blether, there's always somebody there. Yeah, Susie, your neighbour loves my show. <laughs> Thanks very much. Listen, folks, I've got thousands and... Th I've, got, I've got hundreds of... Sorry. I think it's about 800 uh, friends requests uh, pending. But I'm only allowed 5,000 uh, 5, friends on Facebook. And I'm on the 4,000 mark already. Um, so, but we'll get around here. Hi, Anne.
I say, is he? Your local Labour councillor's getting pelters about Sarah Smith. <laughs> That's what he gets for getting on her side. <coughs> Sarah Smith comes from a, a Labour background, as everybody's aware. In fact, the whole cabal who are there at Pacific Key comes from a Labour background. You do know that all the people who work there all attended the same school. Their friends are, they're all friends and friends, and their parents all had positions here in society here. Just by attending the same schools, they got themselves plum jobs. Like Conservative Kate that's on the, on the radio the new. You know? So, hi. <laughs> we're glad to be your friend as well, Susan. Hey, sorry, Suzanne. And we're very keen on that big doggy of yours and all. <laughs> Sheldon's an absolutely fantastic big beastie. And he's great at the marches. So he is. Hey. So, use... I've only got three minutes left in my break, people. So, as I say, use social media hey, um, positively. Reach out to people. If you think your friends are struggling a wee bit, drop them a wee line in Messenger. You know? And I hope my show cheers uh, people that are stuck in the house to themselves up and all. I know sometimes I can be angry and I can rant and things like that. I also like to smile and laugh and all. I'm no, uh, <laughs> I'm no a total old grouch. Although I'm getting there. Grumpy old git stage is coming on me very fast, that's for sure. <laughs> <coughs> you want to thank refuse collectors? I don't want to fight them. I don't want to thank my refuge collectors. They emptied everybody else's bin in my street uh, on Monday morning. But because my, my bin's got a sticker on it that says End London Rule, they didn't empty my bin. This happens regularly to me, so I've got to phone up the council and get them to come out again and empty it. <laughs> um, right, as I say, I went live this morning because once I get out of Newton Stewart, I'm an hour to my next trap. And uh, I'm going to some places a day that I've got some pretty dodgy um, uh, mobile phone connections. Hi, Maz. Nice to see you on. Um, so, as I say, that's it for the day. Ten minutes chatting with you guys. Twenty minutes of the Indy Truck Davy show. So, it's Indy Truck Davy and the truck. Coming to you this morning from Newton Stewart and Dumfries and Galloway. Well, the clouds starting to break. You never know, maybe we've got that sunshine. Stay in the bloody house. What happened yesterday wasn't right. It just wasn't right. Portobello Beach and all the parks full of people sunbathing and all that. There's going to be a spike next week when we want to be coming out of this. Don't want spikes, people. Stay in the house. Don't endanger me or the other people that have to be out here. You don't have to be out here. Stay in your garden. If you don't have a garden, go in the back court of the tenement. Stay close to him. Aye, it's all right, Maz. I'm going to put the rest of the show up. But I'll keep this a um, broadcast, Maz. You better watch it on your break, mate. Um, aye, I know I'm no far for you, Diana. But I'm surprised I didn't end up in the Stranra this morning. Right, that's my break definitely over now, folks. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll weave this up for anybody that wants to watch the Indy Truck Davy part of it. And it's nice to get to spend this wee bit of time talking to you guys live. You know? So you just have a nice day. Stay safe. Stay home. Protect the NHS. Save lives. Listen to the First Minister. I will speak to you all tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be the roundup of the week. I'm going to go live for that as well. And I'm probably going to make it a longer show. Right? <coughs> I'll get through the roundup of the week as quick as possible and we can sit and have a chat again. Because, as I say, it's important that we interact with each other, especially with people that are stuck in the house. All right? Have a nice day. Stay safe. Bye now.